All right. Well, welcome to Wednesday night virtual Bible study. And we are very excited to bring to you this evening the word of God. We're excited because we know the word is never bought of power. It's going to build you up, strengthen you, also challenge you. But God will instruct us in wisdom and righteousness so that our lives will be victorious in the midst of any condition that the land, the society may bring upon us. Our, our ministry has been in faith and prayer, certainly for all the trying conditions and things that this time have brought upon us as a society as well as the church, especially the families who have experienced uh, this virus coming upon loved ones, family members. You are in our prayers and we'll believe in God for restoration, recovery, and healing. We pray that God will give grace and strength and much wisdom to you as you deal with loved ones who have been affected by this virus, or friends, or workers, or family members, and so forth. Amen. So I don't know how many people are on yet. Okay. So you said a lot. Well, good, 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 good. good. Uh, well, we're going to be teaching tonight on the secret place of the Most High. Mm. And of course, Demetri, you stood up one Sunday and you gave that whole psalm, Psalms 91, mm. to our church family and congregation. And it was so anointed because we all have heard Psalms uh, 91. Mm. But uh, the time when you spoke it was right on the, the beginning of what this yeah. virus was yeah. coming upon yeah, I think it was still over in Asia, but they was predicting that it would be coming to our nation as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, the Lord gave you such a, a, an anointing to speak about that. And uh, it's, it resonated so strong in my spirit. I told you, I said, wow, what a blessing that was to hear that and how you spoke it over the church family. And so I feel led of the Lord that I'll be doing a two part teaching that I will be teaching from Psalms 91 and uh, just highlighting some principles, some insights, some things that will enhance any believer walk with the Lord, but also give some encouragement to people who are, who are not living for God or don't know the Lord because so much has come from this particular uh, uh, Psalm and the teaching that we will uh, be, guide, be led by this evening. So, God bless you. Get your Bibles out and follow us, please. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Anything you want to say before no. we start the psalm? All right. Jump so, jump into Psalm 91. Psalms 91. We're going to start at verse uh, 1, which is, which is uh, verse 1 of that particular book. And it says in Psalms 91, verse 1, He who dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Then, of course, the psalm says, I will say of the Lord, he's my refuge, my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. Surely he shall deliver you from snares of the fowler, from perilous, perilous pestilence, and he shall cover you with his feathers. Under his wings you shall take refuge. His truth shall be your shield, buckler, you shall not be afraid, of the terror of night, nor of the arrow that flies by day, nor the pestilence that walk in darkness, nor the destruction that lay waste at noonday. Listen to this. It says, uh, a thousand may fall at your side, 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not come near you. Only with your eyes you will see the reward of the wicked, because you have made the Lord your refuge. The most, even the most high, your dwelling place. Here's a promise for all of us as born again believers. As it says, and no plague shall come near your dwelling, for he give his angels charge concerning you. Well, praise God. What a word. So the Bible here talk about as that psalm open up. It began talking about the dwelling place or the secret place of the Most High. Uh, we will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
Well, it, if you think about it, it says there's a secret place to dwell in with God. And, and how, uh, how relevant that is for us at these times that we're living in, especially when they are given all of the things that we need to do just in the natural to make sure that we are not exposing ourselves or being haphazard yeah. to the virus that is now in the land. Uh, of course, my thing from the gate, I've been saying we need to do both the spiritual and the natural. And that means we should follow godly counsel and wisdom and being able to employ the promises and the blessings of God over us. But I don't think we should recklessly ignore that there's something has happened in our land that have affected the whole globe. And, uh, but we should not be in fear. We should not be afraid. We should not uh, get filled with anxiety and all of these stressful emotions and feelings that drive people to do the wrong thing and to make bad choices in pressure times like this. And so the Bible prescribes the secret place of the Most High. You will abide under the shadow of the Almighty. What is not talking, what, one of the things we know, if, if my shadow is present right now, around close to you, you know that's because I'm present, I'm near. The same with God is when it says the secret place has to do with God being near you, God's presence is around you. And we have studied the word of God to come up with some key insight and principles that will strengthen us as believers that we will make the most out of this time that is that we are all as a society is going through right now not just the church but as a society we all are going through something this is a new frontier for everybody and i've never been this way before but i know there's nothing that have taken god by surprise and i'm glad that i don't have to try to get faith in god in the middle of all this. And even if that's your case, it's better, it's better now than later, you got it? But that I have a relationship with him and I have a confidence tonight. And, I, and it's not to, to, to impress anybody or to be boastful. It simply means that walking with the Lord, you begin to learn some things and you begin to know some things that put strength inside of you and grace upon you to handle difficult times, tough times. You know, there have been some challenging times on the earth before this coronavirus, but God was in the midst of his people. He gave them a strategy, he gave them a plan, he gave them wisdom and guidance how to come right through those times. What do you think about what I just said? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> But chime right on in and be a blessing I mean, to the it's, people. It's the truth. Yeah. It's, um, you know, we were talking at the house and we were just saying that um, knowing where your help comes from, knowing who the source of your who's the source of your strength. Right. And when you know it, like go back to your word that you used a few minutes ago, confidence. Mm -hmm. That that's just something that we keep pushing. It's not. It's not. We have, we're being very careful. We are. We're being mindful that everybody that tunes in, yes, we're talking to Abundant Life family. Good night. Hello, everybody. <laughs> Abundant Life. <laughs> we are talking to Abundant Life family, and we know that we are a well-taught ministry. Word taught. Word, yeah. yeah, we're yeah. taught the word. We understand. You know, we, yes. we minister the message of faith and how we should live by it. But we also take in, into consideration that while we are talking to our partners and we are talking to our family, you may have people that you don't know. I mean, people that do not know what you know. Right. And you want to be able to give them the right information. Correct. According to the word. You, you want Correct. to minister Jesus to them. You want to minister the love of God to them. You want to minister compassion to them. You want to minister hope to them. And we understand that you yourself have to stay plugged into the power source, which is God, to be able to do that. So even when you say that we dwell in the secret place, to me, that's just like going off by yourself and having that time with God to be recharged, to be refueled, so you can stay plugged in to that power source so that you can be effective in the marketplace. Um, right, you got it, we got you got so it, you're right people, on. Um, you know, that we're getting 
you know, of course, we're getting phone calls and we're getting text messages and we're being made very well aware of the impact that this virus has made on even some of our partners that right. connect to it. Not, not so much anyone has been um, contracted the virus or anything like that. Thank God. But, a, amen. Well, but it's mercy. just having to minister like we have many of our partners that are in the healthcare industry that are out there every day. Thank you so much for real. We right. Appreciate your yes. Service. Right. You are ministers unto God going out and you're touching these people and their lives are being impacted by what you know. That's um, right. So that's say right that to say that um, dwelling in the secret place, even though you probably have picked up some more hours and different things, stay dwelling in the secret place of the most high. Stay right. connected to the power source. Right. Don't don't allow the hours or the time, the extended time that you're having to give to care for other people move you from that place because you need it. That's um, right. You know, Andrew Pastor said last week when he was sharing in Bible study with us, he talked about how the word of God tells us that as believers we will lay hands on the sick. Well, the Bible tells us that clearly. We will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. He also went on to say that it's not, it's not our responsibility to heal people, but it's our responsibility to believe dwelling in the secret place of the Most High, mm -hmm. developing in your confidence so that when you are approached by these particular situations, the first thing that doesn't come to your heart is not fear, but rather faith mm -hmm. and love and compassion, knowing that as we operate in the principles that God has made available to us, Jesus has made available to us, we will lay hands on the sick. And guess what? The word says that they will They recover. will recover. No question they about it. They will recover. Mm -hmm. So that's, you know. You know well, well, you hit it right on the head. <laughs> and, and, and may all of our partners, and, and not only if some are viewing who are not our partners, but function in these important job positions at, these, uh, at this hour, yes. you know, from, from servicing uh, the people that's coming in the hospital yes. to the, the ones who get them there and so forth. All of, the, all of that is necessary for us to win the victory over this virus that have plagued our society mm -hmm. at large. But the believer must have a posture mm -hmm. or a position mm -hmm. that people who are unchurched don't have faith as a function inside of their heart, don't have the microscope, I mean, the, the binoculars of faith to look through and have a positive outlook in the face of a challenging uh, situation. And so we want to encourage them uh, to continue abiding in this secret place. But here's, here's another thing. When we think about this, uh, this, the secret place, one of the... Uh, uh, from the Hebrew you look at, it means hide or being or be concealed. Hide or be concealed. It means that you are in a place where you're hiding or you're being concealed from something. Now, okay. So uh, in Genesis 6, Genesis 6 verse 9 tells us, uh, I want to look at a person who showed us the power of functioning in that secret place was Noah. And in Genesis 6, verse 9, it says to me and you, the Lord, well, starting at verse 5, the Lord saw how great man wickedness was on the earth and had become, and had become that every imagination of thoughts of his heart was only evil all the time. The Lord was grieved. And then, and that the Lord, he was grieved that he made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. This is the NIV. So the Lord said, I will wipe mankind whom I created from the face of the earth, man and animals and creatures that move along the ground and birds of the air. For I am grieved that I made them. But verse eight says, but nor found favor in the eyes of the Lord. Another word for favor is grace. He found grace in the eyes of the Lord. Then it says, this is the account of Noah, verse 9. This is the account of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless among the people of his time. He was a righteous man. Two things we see, righteous man and blameless. Righteous man 
and blameless. So Noah had a place, of course, when we read the word of God on these things found in Hebrew uh, 11 and verse 7, it says to me and you that Noah had a place of protection that the people of the society that he lived in didn't have. He had a place of protection, but it's because he wasn't made the righteousness of God like we are as born again believers, but what he did have was a relationship with God at the time and nobody else had it. He literally walked with God in the time that he lived in when others did not. And what did that do? It distinguished Noah or it set him apart from everybody else. It set him apart from the people of the time that he lived in. And the reason be, several things stands out. One, he found grace, the NIV said, found favor. Two, he was a righteous man and blameless, or the King James says, perfect in the eyes of the Lord or he was blameless among the people of his time. Well, then Hebrews chapter uh, 11, verse 7, tells us this. It says, By faith, Noah, being divinely warned, wow, of things not yet seen, divinely warned of things not yet seen, move with godly fear, moved with godly fear, prepared an ark for the saving of his household by which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness which is according to faith. Now notice what it said. He condemned the world, but he also saved his household. And God spoke to him when nobody else was hearing from God. So Noah had a place a protection that nobody else had during his day, during his time. And his protection or his place of, uh, of abiding under the presence or in the presence of God not only preserved him, but it preserved his household. And you know, as we use our faith, as we stand trusting God, who knows, you may see household salvation coming through this challenging time that we in. God is a master at working together whatever Satan means for evil, for our good, and then turns around and use it for his own glory. Now listen to this. It says at Hebrews 11 and 7, by faith, nor being divinely warned of things not seen. What stands out to me in that is number one, he heard from God about the times he was living in. You say, well, what's so special about that? He was hearing from God about the times he was living in because God was preparing to destroy the whole world at that time. We call it, we know the flood mm -hmm. because the imagination of man was on wickedness only, even from his thoughts, from the youngest all the way up to the elder. It said everybody, whole thought, was consumed with nothing but doing wrong and doing evil. And God was grieved over the condition of the, of the land. Thank God that God don't get grieved like that in that sense and ready to wipe everybody out. Matter of fact, the covenant he made with this man, he said that the earth would never be totally destroyed again. And he set the rainbow as the covenant that he made as a result of that. But look at this, Noah number one, heard from God about the times he was in. Do you know nothing affects you as a person, as a believer or individual? Nothing can build your confidence, secure your heart with, with, with joy and peace and serenity like when you hear from God talking to you, right. giving you guidance, mm -hmm. giving you instructions, mm -hmm. telling you what to do letting you know how to prepare, even in times like this, how you prepare for it, how you prepare in such a way that you come out of this better than, the, than it started. Mm -hmm. Nothing can, can, can help us 
like that other than when we hear from the Lord himself. And you know, that's what's so beautiful about the word of God when we teach from the Bible. It produced faith. Faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And it's vitally important, as you have heard me say in some of our pre-virtual services, that what you're listening to throughout the day, what you're consuming your mind with and what you're allowing to get in your ear and before your eyes definitely is shaping your behavior and your and your perception and outlook about things in this life that we live in. And so it's important that you, you know, uh, and especially if you're dealing with anxiety or if you're dealing with uh, depression or anything like that, I can tell you right now, you need to cut all those, those news outlets off. Just shut them down. Find you some word, find you some praise, uh, find you some music uh, or some sermons that you done listen to that lift you and built you up and minister to you and put them on and play them around the clock in your house. Yes. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, so number one, he heard from God about the times he lived in. Mm -hmm. Number two, the Bible said God not only uh, no, not only heard from God, but he was warned when others at the time did not get the warning. God gave it directly to him what he was going to do. But Noah began to preach and tell everybody what was going to happen, but the people didn't listen. Man, I'm going to be talking about this real good Sunday. People, people heard Noah preach it, but they didn't take heed to it. They did not listen. And I'm going to tell you something without a doubt. This have got the world's attention. Mm -hmm. And it also has gotten the church attention. Mm -hmm. I believe personally, somebody can take it how they want to. I believe this is a wake up call for the church. Yes. That number one, it has revealed our spiritual condition. Yes. It has revealed our relevance and influence in the society that we're living in. That we <laughs> should be having an impact upon our society that they say no way the church can close down right. we need these people right. but the mindset of the world right now we don't need we don't need the church yeah. you know unfortunately uh but let's go on from there so a lot you can say more. <laughs> <laughs> a lot you can say on that let me know if y'all can hear me better got a microphone now i was trying to use pastors only so just give me some, uh -huh, uh -huh. Give me some thumbs up well we done gave you some good keys already that, that he heard, Thanks, but, but, why, but why Noah heard what other people didn't hear? He was dwelling in the secret place. Mm -hmm. He was dwelling in the secret place. And God, by, by Sunday, you're going to know what your secret place is, mm -hmm. and you're going to dwell there as long as we have to wait in this time. Yes. You will be okay. Mm -hmm. You will have nothing to fear. You will have nothing to fear and you will be all right and you will come out of this strengthened with all might by God's spirit in your inner man. You won't come out of this messed all up, confused. You know, really, let's be honest, how people go through this is going to depend whether some people keep their sanity yeah. because the temptation of mental breakdown and stress can come on people so that they snap, because fear do that to you. You know, people talking about the shortness of breath. You can get so full of fear that your breath leave you. Mm -hmm. You know, I was talking about that in one of our service there. So fear got to be dealt with. The Bible said men and all their life were in bondage to fear in Hebrews. Mm -hmm. We were in bondage to the fear of what? Death. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing as believers, we have already died. If you made Jesus the Lord of your life, you have died to this world as we know it. And, 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 and you cannot live without experiencing death because the Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die, after that the judgment. So everybody has an appointment with death. That's not shocking to us because this life is temporal, temporary. The psalmist said it's like a vapor of smoke. James said it's like a vapor and it's gone. So that means that we can, we can be here on planet Earth and do nothing but waste our time while we're here. Or we can make the most of our time. What's your thought there? You really want me to share on that? Yeah, you can. So it's interesting because, you know, this is literally the conversation that we had when we, were, when we woke up this morning. 
And again, we we're talking about how you can just get so bogged down, if you will, with the information that's coming. So literally when we woke up this morning, mm -hmm. well, literally when we went to bed last night, we were listening to a minister. He was sharing with us and we took some things away from it, but we didn't talk about it last night. So this mm -hmm. morning we kind of talked about it and kind of gave our perspective on it. Right. Um, you know, we share it with each other about where, we, you know, what, what we took away from it. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it, it's almost like, We've made a decision, like Pastor Lockhart and I, we have people that we are committed to, that we sit up under. You you can go and you can listen to Dr. Tunde Bakari. You can listen to Dr. Mike and, and Freeman and Dee Dee Freeman. You can listen to Apostle Williams. And we take their counsel. We see them as our spiritual, um, you know, uh, big coverings. brothers and big sisters and yes. covering in yes, the faith. Yes. So there's so much that we, you know, the Bible tells us in there, there's, a, there's safety in a multitude of counsel. So you know, we know that we operate in two realms at the same time, the natural realm and the realm of the spirit. Right. So the natural realm is consumed with what's going on in the world. And they're talking about the virus and how many people's lives are being affected by it and all these different things. But those that are spiritual, we see things that's going on as well. So we're listening to the news from the ones that we seek counsel from. OK, and so the world is telling us, you know, almost giving the impression that this is not going to be over anytime soon, that this is the new normal, um, that life, uh, just given this, this really negative part. So Andrew and I were just talking this morning and I was just sharing with him that I'm so grateful that um, I've been given the opportunity and uh, many of you can say the same thing, that you made a decision to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and personal Savior. Right. That you've come into a relationship. Right. If not fully, but a developing relationship with God. One in which you're allowing Holy Spirit to lead you in every area of your life. Mm -hmm. That in the morning when you wake up, you know, you're giving thanks. You're honoring the one who created you. You're giving thanks for all that he has made for available to you in the past. Mm -hmm. And what will be made available to you in the present. So with that being said, when you become whole, Okay, in Christ Jesus, when you get to a place where you realize that life is is so precious and that time is so valuable and that you can't get it back, you almost want to just be here. I was telling him that, you know, there was a season in my life, a very long season in my life, at least it seemed very, very extended to me, um, that I was not living in the fullness. I was not walking with understanding, I was not walking with wisdom, I was not allowing myself to be led by Holy Spirit, nor was I um, intentionally submitting myself to renew my mind mm -hmm. in areas. And I allowed my emotions um, to take me into places that I found very difficult and hard and challenging. Um, I was hurt, I hurt a lot of people in the midst of that. I can't get that time back. And what I was saying to him is that if Jesus was to come back today, that I'm ready. Right. I'm ready to go. But the, the, the part that I, that if I had to say saddens me a little bit is that so much time was wasted um, living my life the way that I wanted to live my life and not the, for the purpose and cause why the Lord sent me here and has allowed me to be here. So I made a decision that for the rest of my days, I'm going to serve God with all my heart, with all my soul, with all my strength. And, and that's what I've chosen to do. So I know it's kind of roundabout way, but I have to give back stories. That's just the way my mind is set up to help people understand. And so when I look at even the story about Noah and the story as it was told and how he was telling people, hey, you know, this is coming, this is coming, let's prepare, let's prepare. Right. That's something that comes up on the heart of a believer when you love, when, you, when you've experienced love for real and you experience a deliverance, when you've experienced change, you want everybody that you know to, to come into that experience just like you did and even greater. So when you, when you tell them, hey, at the end of that road, that there's a roadblock and the roadblock is there for a reason because right behind that roadblock, the road drops off and you could per perish. Um, so you want people to not go down that road. So I'm saying all that to say that I value time now like I've never valued it before. Absolutely. I want to see 
my family members right you know i want to see everybody and it's a very difficult conversation sometimes because when you come into an understanding of who god is it is exciting and you know when you close your eyes on this side where you're going but there are still people who are still trying to figure it out and they feel like you know oh you're just judging me oh you're not giving me time but then when you realize that in any day and we're experiencing that a lot of people are experiencing that right now any day could be your last day that's right and what have you done with the time that you had and and um so i know it's i know it's long no but, but you, you you've said some good yeah. things and what i like to just add on the heels of that you didn't allow it wasn't coronavirus uh, no. <laughs> coronavirus no. that made you make those adjustments in your life right. it was awakening yes it was becoming more understanding to who you were in right. God and some of the things that was out of place and out of shape in your life, you took the blame for it and you took the initiative yes. to make some life altering changes. Yeah. And so that's why we're ministering the way we are with the passion we're doing now, because one of the things this whole thing has done global, it has not only challenged the world, everything that the world relies on, mm -hmm. everything that it stands for mm -hmm. has fell right down in front of us. Mm -hmm. Politics, entertainment, athletic, mm -hmm. sports were all that. And nothing in itself is wrong with that. Mm -hmm. When it become wrong is when we done put these things in the place of God mm -hmm. with no conviction about it right. and just go on with life like a robot mm -hmm. as if life gonna stay the same way mm -hmm. forever. Mm -hmm. It won't. Right. Change has come. Right change is inevitable and change will continue to come as we stay alive here and so i just wanted to say that on the heels yeah. of what you were saying because not only have it challenged the world but it's a wake-up call to the household of faith mm -hmm. it's a wake-up call to the christians at large mm -hmm. that we need to do some examination of ourselves to put ourselves back in light of what God's words say. I told you, that thing came inside of my spirit and it, it I mean, it resonated me. Such a simple thing, but the Lord say, say it. Mm -hmm. The world is teaching my people how not to rely on me. Mm -hmm. And I want to say that even in lieu of the stimulus package and all of these things are coming and thank God you're a taxpayer, anything the government give us, we should, we should get it. Yeah. But here's the thing, we ain't relying on the government to be our source. That's right. God will supply Philippians 419, mm -hmm. all that the, the body of Christ need, mm -hmm. all that the church need, mm -hmm. all that God's people need. Our God is the supplier of it, mm -hmm. and every good and perfect gift come from him. See, that's what that abiding in the yeah. shadow or the secret place mm -hmm. does to you. Mm -hmm. You know, it ain't that these things ain't happening, but I'm not affected by it in the sense mm -hmm. where my mind is all whopping, right. my emotions is all jacked up to the, to the high of us. No, 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 no. I have the peace of God before it came. I have the peace of God right now, and I will have the peace of God when it's over with. Mm -hmm. Because, see, Jesus said, my peace I leave. That's right. My peace I'm giving to you. This is not a product of the world you live in. It's not in this world. It's a supernatural grace from God that you will have peace even in the midst of trouble times. Peace in trouble times. Anybody yes, know? that's right. That's right. <laughs> Praise God. Yes, yeah. peace in trouble times. Peace in trouble times. And so we want to tell you there is a secret place. Mm -hmm. If you don't know about it, you're going to find it. Yes. There is a secret place. And Noah understood that secret place. Mm -hmm. It gave him the ability to hear what other people wasn't hearing. That's right. Praise God. I thank God for all the body of Christ. Mm -hmm. But I have a relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. and I can hear from him. Mm -hmm. You have a relationship with the Lord mm -hmm. and you can hear from him. You don't have to go through the priest anymore mm -hmm. to hear from God. That's right. You have a direct hotline to heaven. Mm -hmm. And if you spirit feel my God, you know it. Hallelujah. And, to that, you. and that support that supports yes. what we were talking about earlier. Because listen, you guys, you know, God has left on record for a reason why He has given us, you know, fivefold ministry gifts. Why He's given us a pastor. Why He's, you know, and what what that means. And 
there is safety in the multitude of counsel. So even as you're developing in this relationship with God, and even as you're developing in hearing from God, be, be, be okay with checking in with those that have experienced some things and know more than you know. That's and right. Run those thoughts that you're having. That's right. By somebody who can help you. That's right. Um, make some good choices because if you know you can rattle off and be like, okay, I heard from God, and do something crazy and be like, and it gives the wrong representation of God. Be like, well, I heard something. Like tempting God. Yeah, like I heard something. <laughs> you well, it. if you are we a baby, do that. and some people are, that yes. may be on tonight, that they're developing in a relationship with God, get in contact with other people. Pray, yes, develop. Thank the Lord. But how are you going to develop and hear from him if you don't know what his word says? So if they work together, because by the Lord, the Holy Spirit speaks from his word. So it's not going to be some mystical, strange voice, some strange instructions. But if it is that you hear something, if it is that you have a dream or have a vision, be okay That's right. with talking to someone. And then you have to, you know, we, if we don't know, we're going to be like, we don't know. We're going to sit up here That's and try right. to come up with something so yeah. we can sound like we, you know. We like just, we done, we done some Jesus total of all knowledge. Amazing. No, no, Yeah, because no. right. we're not. Here's the thing. But the Bible says that any man that lacks wisdom can ask of the Lord and he will give it to you. So, you know, this is all in relationship and developing in confidence. I just wanted to say that because you people can hear that all kinds of ways um you know when it comes to being able to hear the voice of god it takes time to develop in that and here's here's another thing um sometimes you might miss it sometimes you might miss it but i would rather trust that i'm hearing from him get the counsel that i need move in that and know that if i did miss it if i did say something if my heart was right about it God will cover me and protect me. I got that from Mama Gould. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. Yeah. That's good. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Yeah. Well, uh, the Bible here said Noah heard from God, and he, wouldn't, he, he didn't have an indwelling presence of the Lord, but he had a walk with God. Mm -hmm. So that voice became familiar with him, yeah. and he walked with God in the times when nobody else was not doing it. So mm -hmm. then we see people who find this secret place yeah. that I'm talking about this evening, also are distinguished mm -hmm. or they are to some degree they have what we would call a set apart lifestyle yes. they are distinguished and god has been doing that a long time god makes a distinction mm -hmm. with his people mm -hmm. relating to anybody else on the face of the earth mm -hmm. and because god make that distinction you will see god begin doing things on behalf of his people, that people who have not come under his covenant, even though Jesus in this new covenant has died for the whole world. Yes. But Ephesians said they without people are dying without hope, mm -hmm. without covenant, without the promises mm -hmm. that God can heal, feel, bring provision, make ways mm -hmm. and so forth. Mm -hmm. They're living without that covenant understanding mm -hmm. because they haven't plugged into the Christ. Mm -hmm. It is necessary that we have a personal relationship with Jesus Absolutely. and denomination and, 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 and any other uh, persuasion of belief mm -hmm. can't substitute inviting Christ into your heart mm -hmm. and making him Lord of your life. Mm -hmm. Now, so then Noah being won by God mm -hmm. moved with fear. It, it, it is something to talk about fear right now okay. because the Bible said he moved with fear. Mm -hmm. What kind of fear was this that moved Noah to do something in the midst of a society that made him look absolutely crazy? Mm -hmm. That move of fear was tied with faith. Mm -hmm. And it wasn't the fear that is so pervasive right now right. over our society. Right. Dread. Right. Death. It was reverence. There you go. Mm -hmm. It was a reverence fear. Mm -hmm. And it's important that people understand those who tap into the secret place in this hour that we live in must also understand you must have a reverent fear of the living God. Mm -hmm. You can't just behave like everybody else right. that don't know nothing about God, talking like them. Come on, some of you, our mouth can be so, mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, some of the things that people can say, yeah. 
And then I turned right around and said, Lord, forgive me. I mean, cuss like a seller, mm -hmm. you know, and have no embarrassment to talk mm -hmm. foul, vulgar language. Right. You know, something is wrong with that. Mm -hmm. I tell you what it lack. You lack the fear of God. Mm -hmm. not, not, not just talk about our language, but then how we can treat people yes. and what we can say about people, mm -hmm. talking about things that without any understanding of it mm -hmm. and just go b bananas on it right. and then turn around and think you're right with God. Mm -hmm. Well, you may be a child of God, but there are some provisions from God that you will not be able to access it mm -hmm. because your actions and your conduct mm -hmm. and your behavior can cancel out some things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, because, I mean, we have to believe that because how do you explain some people receive and some don't? yet you are all God's family. Mm -hmm. There are some things we have to employ. There are some things we have to do mm -hmm. besides just saying the Lord is going to do it. Right. No, no, no. We got to do some things, mm -hmm. and I'm going to talk about them in this uh, teaching here mm -hmm. uh, that we're looking at. So I think that we need to understand fear, there's a godly fear, and then there's a tormenting fear. Yeah. Now, I'm sure you know about fear. We, 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 we've talked about this for years, mm -hmm. but still, let's let the Bible give us scripture reference on this. So in 2 Timothy, uh, chapter 1, verse 7, and I'm reading from the NIV, and listen to what it says to you. From the NIV, 2 Timothy. Y'all doing all right? I know you are. <laughs> Verse 7 says, it says, For God did not give us a spirit of timidity, mm -hmm. but a spirit of power, mm -hmm. of love, mm -hmm. and of self-discipline. Mm -hmm. I like that because, see, the NIV, the NIV takes it to another level. Mm -hmm. King James said power, love, and a sound mind. But, but it talk about uh, here love and self-discipline. Mm -hmm. That means we're taking control mm -hmm. over our mind. We're not letting our mind rip and run and letting the devil make a playground mm -hmm. inside our, our mind. That's right. Because as he think, there's a wow. spiritual law that says what I keep dwelling on, mm -hmm. pretty soon I'll give words to it mm -hmm. or give action to it, and that thing will come to pass, good or bad. Right. As he think, as you think, mm -hmm. so you become eventually what your thoughts are producing, mm -hmm. you see. So here the Bible tell us, then there mean there's some things come in my mind I need to take discipline over. Yes. There's some things that come to my heart that I think I need to say that I should take discipline over, mm -hmm. especially when it's cruel, harsh, mm -hmm. demeaning, mm -hmm. or putting someone or somebody down. Mm -hmm. I need to take charge over those kind of things because mm -hmm. here God value people. He value all people. Mm -hmm the good, bad, and the ugly. It doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. God value all people, mm -hmm. and we got to treat people good because God love people, people. Yes. Period. period. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And so here, the, then this fear, the Bible said, God didn't give you a spirit that causes you to be in dread. Mm -hmm. Fear and faith both work the same way. Mm -hmm. Both is dealing with the unseen, both is expecting something from both arena. One, simply anticipate the good things, something that's going to enhance and help your life. Faith gives substance to things hoped for, evidence of things which you can't see. But that law of fear working with it brings the things you don't want to happen to you, but you're anticipating that they will happen. That's what fear does to you. So both is a believing power. One is this a negative damnable, the other one is good and bring blessings and release God's power on our behalf. Mm -hmm. Amen. So we see he was moved with not this fear we're talking about here and what Timothy is addressing, but it talks about a godly fear. Mm -hmm. I find that over in Psalms 37. Let's look at it for a moment. I, I think we may have to wind it up just from the Psalms here because it is so loaded. But in Psalms 37, and we'll bring your attention to a few verses that we've highlighted for you in this particular book. Psalms 37, and uh, I think I want to read it from the 
the King James rather than the NIV. We have two good Bibles here. But listen what it says from the New King James. It says, starting at verse 3, it says, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and feed on his faithfulness. Do you hear that, people of God? Trust in the Lord, you'll do good. Then the Bible says, feed on his faithfulness. Well, how do I feed on his faithfulness? Keep remembering the things God has done for you and begin giving thanksgiving for him. Always stand in an attitude of being grateful for what the Lord has done That's for right. you. Done for your family, mm -hmm. done for your loved ones, people that you work with, people that you done stood in the gap for and asked the Lord to help them. Mm -hmm. And you've seen them do it. Mm -hmm. Dwell on those things. Feed in times like this. Feed on the goodness of God. Yes. Surrounded by his goodness, as the song <laughs> said. That's right. <laughs> We're surrounded by his goodness. Then the scripture said, delight yourself also in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Mm -hmm. You listening to that? Mm -hmm. God said, when you start learning how to hang out in that secret place with him, he said, it will cause the, the, the desires. Mm -hmm. Not what you need. <laughs> he'll give you what you want. How about that one? Praise God. I say not just what you need. God will give you what you want because that's what the Bible says here. He'll give us the desires of our heart. It says commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he shall bring it to pass. What a verse. Yeah. What a verse. Mm -hmm. So here we see the psalmist began by giving an assurance to the, to the reader mm -hmm. of some of the qualities and the faithfulness of God to them. And then when we look a little further here, verse 18 of that particular book, as we read to five, verse 18 says, The Lord know the days of the upright, and their inheritance shall be forever. God knew about these times we're living in in 2020. That's what it says. God know the days. He know the time you're in. And the Bible here says uh, that <laughs> he, will, he and their inheritance shall be forever. They shall not be ashamed in evil time. Take that. You will not be ashamed in these days we living in. If you belong to Jesus, he's made a commitment to you. And even over in the new covenant, Romans 10 and 30, 11 say, they that put their trust in me shall not be put to shame. Yes. That's in the new covenant and the old. Mm -hmm. What is that telling you? Out of the mouth of two or three witnesses, every word is established. That means God has committed itself to this promise to you. So even in evil times, and in the days of famine, they shall be satisfied. Mm. In the days of economic breakdown and collapse, where the job right now you can't go to it, where the money, whatever you have, is limited, but you, but you serve the El Shaddai of the Bible. The old covenant name of God was El Shaddai, the all-sufficient God, mm. the God who's not just enough but more than enough. He's more than enough to take you no matter how long the shutdown remains. He can supply from the start to the finish. I didn't supposed to be preaching tonight. I was supposed to be lecturing you, but I feel something on me right now. But God is your El Shaddai. He's not just enough. He's too much for any situation we face. He's bigger than any trial, any test, any virus, He's bigger than that. You say, preacher, sound like you boasted on your God. You better believe I am. That God is bigger than anything this nation is facing. However, the government don't know God. The world don't know God. So who's going to give this kind of truth? The believers are the only one can be a voice to God in this earth. We are the one to tell the people what God will do and what he, has, what he will bring and how he will help them. He will strengthen and he will help. You ought to, yeah, this is a praise breakdown, that one. That ought to, you, you ought to be, can't stop praising his name right now because I'm talking about supernatural supply. 
Listen to me. Listen to me. I don't care what it looked like in the natural. The God I'm talking about tonight, he still know how to feed his people if he have to send a raven with meat in his mouth to give it to you. Glory to God. He still know how to tell you where the fish is at and just say, open the mouth and pull the corn out that will supply and take care of everything that you and your house need. And right in the same psalm that I'm reading to, which I got excited before I got there, he said, never will the righteous be. Dave said, I'm, I, I, was, I, was, I was young and now I'm old, but never have I seen the righteous forsaken, nor their seed begging for bread. That's what surround us. That's what protect us. Mm -hmm. And all that concern you comes up under this blessing. All that concern you comes up under this grace mm -hmm. called the secret place mm -hmm. of the Most High. Mm -hmm. What are the things that Noah had in place? He was righteous. Mm -hmm. So that means we must commit to righteousness on a whole new level. Matter of fact, Paul told the church in Corinth, he said, awake to righteousness mm -hmm. and sin not. That means, he said, because many don't have the knowledge of God. So there are people who thinking they can just do anything, live any kind of way, and God going to supply everything they need still. It, no, but there's some nonsense teaching that makes people believe stuff like this. It don't work that way. No, it don't work that way. It never have, and it never will. But there are some places that any believer can tap into, make a commitment to these truths, and see God's hand go to work in a mighty way. Glory be to God. Let me, let me continue reading this on to you because it says, in the day of famine, they shall be satisfied. That means you'll have all sufficiency. Mm -hmm. You'll have enough. You'll have enough not only for you, but you can help your neighbor. Yes. Don't just think selfishness. Does God take care of me, my foe, and no more? No, 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 no. God will supply you so you can supply your neighbors. Mm -hmm. And I know that we got social distance right now. Mm -hmm. But still, we can help people. Yes. And there are many creative ways yeah. how you can reach out and help somebody. Yeah. Praise be to God in whom all blessings flow. Mm -hmm. All right. So verse 19 tells us in famine, uh, in evil times, I won't be put ashamed. In famine time, I will be satisfied. Mm -hmm. Famine speaks of lack of food, so forth, but it also speaks of economic collapse. Mm -hmm. That means when the money system, like it's doing right now, has shut down, God said, I still know how to get, the, I still know how to get things to you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I ain't, I ain't boasting, but since all this has started, I mean, I don't hear people been sending me money ever since this stuff started. What else? I mean, God, it's the faithfulness of God. They have, but you've also been sowing. Yeah, well, I'm just saying still. Oh, we, can't, we can't ignore that. Yeah, but still. We're not just sitting around just waiting yeah, But for still, to come what I'm out. saying, the, the ways of the Lord work. Yes, sir. That's correct. It worked. Yes, You're absolutely right. Now, listen to this. Here's another thing we want to hear and see and understand. Not only that, but verse 25, mm -hmm. David says, I've been young, mm -hmm. and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken, nor his descendant begging bread. Mm -hmm. I've been young, and now I'm old. Yet have I not seen the righteous. Who are we talking about? People who are in right standing with God has a supernatural connection to the God of heaven. Yes, sir. That ain't by works. That's by the grace and the mercies of God through the shed blood of the Lord Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And out of that, we work our faith, yes. but nothing we can do to earn or merit that. Yes. We have to receive it. Yes. Is that right? Yes, sir. Praise God. Then we see a contrast that's revealed in the same psalm. In verse 35, it says, I've seen the wicked in great power. Mm -hmm and spreading himself like a native green tree. Yet he passed away, and behold, he was no more. Indeed, I sought, but I could not find. Mark the blameless man, talking about righteous people, and observe the upright, for the future of that man is peace. The future God has for me and you and your household is one of peace, not anxiety, not depression, 
not borderline snapping in your mind or not suicidal thoughts. Mm -hmm. No, mm -hmm. your future is filled with peace. Mm -hmm. Now, if that's under the old covenant, and I'll be talking about it in, on Sunday service virtual, that Hebrews say the church of the living God has a better covenant established upon better promise. I want to tell you better mean improvement. If they could make this kind of boast under the old covenant, which is applicable when you see it in light of redemption, but how much more we can say the Bible says that there's a blood that speaks better things than that of Abel. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that we should come boldly. You were talking about that. Before the throne of grace. Mm -hmm. The throne of grace. Mm -hmm. And find mercy and help in a time of need. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. What's your thought there? I mean, we talked about it last night. Amen, but they, they want to hear it. <laughs> Me and you talked about it. They want to hear it. I mean, but, you know, he helped me even last night because we were talking about, you know, the perspective of grace because I'm, yes. you know, I'm in the book of Romans and I'm reading it out, studying right. it out, and I'm hearing some things and seeing some things even clearer, you know, this time around as it pertains to righteous living, as it pertains to sin and sin consciousness, as it pertains to condemnation, as it pertains to, you know, the promises, period, that God has made to us, um, to all mankind. But grace is to the believer is what Andrew brought out last night. You know? right. And it doesn't give a license to continue in sin. Grace is available to help you Absolutely. as you're transitioning. Your desire, when we, when we become born again, um, I know a lot of us, when we've accepted Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior initially, we came to the altar or accepted him because someone presented him to us and said, you know, he'll make your life better and, you know, all these different things. But then you discovered after making that decision that you ne didn't necessarily see um, right away some of the things and you got discouraged and maybe, you know, you maybe went back into the lifestyle that you were coming from and started hanging out and doing some of the same things. But when you come in and, and it, it's, you know, we want to do an excellent job as sharing that with people. But when you come in, you need to be taught about the decisions that you're making and, you know, that there is a process to that. So along the process, grace is made available to help you transition from where you were to where God to wants. To where God would have you to That's be. It's absolutely not a right. license to just continue doing what you were doing other than that why come to the savior why that's why right give your heart to him so in that conversation when, when andrew and i were talking last night and we were talking about the whole grace concept and how in many in many settings the teaching on grace has been taught wrong but he was just bringing even greater clarity that grace is available to help you in oh, the process yes. mercy is for the unbeliever that's what you said, right? Mm -hmm. Mercy is for those who don't know him so that they can have mercy. Mercy's been made available so that they can step into the grace that's been made available to them to receive by faith. Amen. Praise God. Yeah. Because grace is unmarried with favor, a position that we have from God by what Jesus did on behalf of God yeah. for the whole world. Yeah. And grace is just exercising that faith in that and receiving something I can't earn, right. can't deserve, and can't be good enough right. in and of myself to ever get it. Mm -hmm. But God, on the terms of faith, mm -hmm. delivers us uh, into his family by grace. Are we saved through our faith? Yes. So it was a grace manifested. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Well, we've reached the top of the hour, but we yep. pray that you have been blessed. Mm -hmm. We pray that we have said some things that it, I'm sure some of you, you've heard truths along these lines, but maybe the Lord gave you greater light, greater understanding, Absolutely. and uh, a greater illumination because faith come by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We pray right now for you that are, yeah. that are viewing. We pray yeah. for your family. Yes. We pray for your loved ones and yeah. even those that you are concerned about. Mm -hmm. As you release your faith for them, we are in agreement that God will do some uncommon things in this hour mm -hmm. on your behalf, on their behalf, and that there's no such thing as a sickness or a disease that Jesus didn't pay for. Mm -hmm. So we're not, listen, 
it, it, the virus, if you test it positive, is not a death sentence. Right. Get panic off of you. Yes. Get fear off of you mm -hmm. and believe that God is who he say he is. Mm -hmm. So you reach out to him and say, Lord, I've been tested positive, but I've heard the report of the Lord tonight that you are greater than any virus in this earth. Mm -hmm. Therefore, I resist the outcome of death and this destroying my organs. Mm -hmm. And I receive the life of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. from the top of my head to the soles of my feet mm -hmm. to my fingertips. And I declare the blood covenant yes. over my home. You, over my family, mm -hmm. over my business, mm -hmm. over my loved ones, mm -hmm. over my transportation, over my going out to get food or whatever I have to do. The blood of Jesus cover me mm -hmm. and all that concern me. Mm -hmm. If you receive that by faith, mm -hmm. then thank God for it in Jesus name. Mm -hmm. And to our next mm -hmm. section, me and Tamisha love you very much. Mm -hmm. Abundant Life Faith, mm -hmm. Abundant Life Church International is standing in faith with you mm -hmm. and yours. Mm -hmm. God bless. Good night, everybody.